Well, good morning and welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda and I'm here today with Jim, who's harnessing up Bill. And we have a new friend, um, Jacob, who's spending a few days with us working with our horses. And they are going to get everybody hooked up and they're gonna take three out this morning and go for a plow. We are very thankful for Jacob's help. Um, if you missed the last video, um, Jim and Jacob were harrowing my garden, which was very, I was very excited about. And um, so we were so thrilled to get a few things done and now it's moving on to the next thing. Jim's going to be using his trailer plow today and three horses, so it's going to be Bill and Ken and, and Baron today. Yep. Okay, so I have no lines on Bill, so I'm going to get a set of lines for him. Why don't you have any lines on Bill? Because yesterday we harrowed your garden. Oh, because you... So we need the straight lines then. Okay. Inquiring minds want to know. And I have to think now, because he's going to be on the, the off side, on the right side. So. Jacob is harnessing up there. This is his first time yesterday. He harnessed up these guys. This is, or did you harness him up yesterday? No, I did. No, you did. But he won't have any problem with that, I'm sure. He doesn't just barely get over the back, he throws it over the back. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, just for a second. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and you're not used to it this way, but remember, for these guys, for my horse, oh, you don't have to put this in. I don't want to because it's hard to hit your hands. Okay. So everybody's harnesses are a little different and... Yeah, Jacob is, is from Western New York and uh, he helps a lot. He's uh, new to the draft horses, but he's got a really good, apparently a really nice draft horse club there that he's been getting a lot of experience with horses with and he's got a, a good neighbor that has horses, so he's getting a lot of experience there also. Um, but his horses, the harnesses on the horses that he's dealing with are mostly the Western style harnesses and so he's not really used to these type of harnesses. Something up here. That needs to go down. Too high. Yep. Okay. So it's a little bit different with my harnesses, but, but he's figuring out. <clears throat> okay. Oh, just a second. That's really loose, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, drop the belly grip. And actually, let's, uh, let, let's show people. Okay. So, this belly girth on Baron is getting, it's, it's not getting, it's just, it's too long. Oh, I okay. Need to go, I need to get some more holes in it. Oh, okay. Sure. So because it's too long, um, I mean, I could shorten a couple of holes here, but even when I did, it's still too long. So what I do, and it must have just fallen off when we were moving it, is I actually run this belly girth strap, everything, 
right up and over. Oh, okay. Like that. Gotcha. And now it's considerably shorter. And so now I'll get out of the way and you can go ahead okay. and see the other side and that should be just perfect. Step over, bro. Get over. Come on. There you go. Okay, so since I'm using three horses, um, I have to do it a little bit differently. When I'm using two horses, if you, as you guys have always seen, I'll just hit two horses up in the, in the doorway there, and then from there I'll hit them all up and drive them out, hit them onto whatever implement I'm planning on using. So with the three horses, I can't do that. There's not enough room. So uh, what I, I could change things around, but what I do with three horses, I actually just lead them out to um, my plows and next to the truck party that I have, and I would just lead one at a time out there. With Jacob here to help me, we can do it a little faster. So I will put uh, um, Ken's bread on him okay. and take him out. Put uh, Bill's harness, I mean bridle on him. Did I say harness on him? Yeah. <laughs> I did that all the time. That's all right. Um, and put Bill's bridle on him and follow me right out. Okay. On your way out through, grab a lead rope off the wire over there. Okay. Doesn't matter what, which one. Um, so that we have that for Bill. Okay. I usually run through like this. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Now, I was, show me how you do yours. Well, I did one the other day, and I don't know if it was you right. You usually do them then. Really. No. Go ahead. No, usually I'll do through. Oh, like that. No. Okay. Yeah, that's well, you can do it that way, but that one holds so well. Right. All right, show me you one more time. Okay. Yep. So I'll run it through the ring. All the way around and through. Okay. Okay. So you go on my backward side in. All the way. All the way around. Yep, just like that. Yep, perfect. So what it also uh, you did right, but I tie it, I pull it like that. Oh, okay. Right. So that's gonna hold it, and then okay. when I'm gonna be a while, right. I'll stick Put this the here so they can't pull right. But if I'm just gonna be in these few minutes. Okay. Okay. Let me hitch these two up, and uh, I'll explain a bunch of things. If you could hitch this. Yeah. Second. So when we use three horses, we only have. We use a regular team line on each of the outside horses. The center horse has his team line still on, but they're just not going to be used. They're just sitting there. So the line from Bill would go to Ken like this, but we're not using Ken's team lines. So we need to have some way to tie Bill to Ken. So we use this short strap that's just to his hand to hitch Bill. And this is just you need to adjust this according to, according to how they're working. So I'm gonna hitch up the neck yoke. I might even hitch up some of the, the evener and then we'll bring Baron back around and he's gonna be on the further side of the can. Um, if you remember the last time I used the three, I had Ken in the center, but I had Baron here and Bill on the other side. The reason I wanna do it like this is because I want to have Bill in the furrow and Baron, I want him to be on the land. Um, and so there could be an issue with that and I'll explain later what that might be or if it is an issue. So Jacob, if you've got any questions, I'll be asking. Okay. So I readjusted my evener because I knew this is a setup I was going to have. So I had Baron way at the end of the evener and someone asked about the three horse evener. And so what it is, is you have two horses on this side with a regular evener and a single tree out here for the single horse. But as you can see, this is one third of the way through the actual three horse evener. So there's, you know, one third here, two thirds here. That gives him the difference in the pulling, the, the weight of everything by having that longer evener. If, if this evener right here 
was to come out this far and I was pulling against that team of horses, I could actually go at some point far enough out here so I could actually pull just as much as they could. It's hard to believe, but it is true. For me, I'm not that strong, so I might have to go a long, long ways. But if Jacob was out here, he might not have to go too far. But you understand the, uh, the, how that works with the evener. Um, the leverage, if it's a longer piece, you have more leverage. It's just like running a cant hook in the woods. If you have a nice long handled cant hook, you can roll a huge log. If you got a, or PP, whichever, and if you got a really short one, you gotta be really strong to, to roll a big log because right. you don't have the leverage. Right. And that's what this is all about. Okay, I'm gonna hit these guys up. Uh, if I recall, we were on the fifth, fifth or sixth link. Um, so that would be from the very back, um, counting the clevis. So we line them up so they're, line them up like this, Jacob, so they're there. So you don't get things twisted, so you have you have even and odd numbers. So you okay. Got two, four, five. You want it on this. So the, the hook is pointing uh, so out. Up. Up no, out? No, because it will be out. If it's on the fifth link, it's going to be pointing out. Okay. Also, when you do this. That's a sixth one. Right. So you want it on the fifth, then? Yes. Okay, so I did that. So also, when you do that, slide that link back. Oh, okay. And then, oops, you still got twisted. You, you got to look at it flat. So this is going to be flat. Oh, okay. Right. So, oh, that's why so I'm twisted. Got, okay. If you go two, four, and, you know, if you, you keep the, the evens and the odds. Right, right. You'll keep it straight. So you got two, four, five. Okay. And you want it pointed out. That's why, because I was twisting it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oops, you just the link there. It was in the back. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I might be wrong, it might be the sixth link that we need to be at, but I'll, uh, I'll deal with that when I get there. Right. I want to thank the guy from Hope, from, uh, I'm not sure where he's from, that made my lead ropes that he, he sent me. Um, I really like him a lot. Um, I can't remember, I can't remember his name, I think it might be Jim. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, I can't remember his name. But if we think of it, we'll put it in the description below. So if any of you guys want lead ropes, you would give him a call and he would make whatever type of lead rope you want out of this, this particular way and it's really nice. Sorry uh, that I forget your name. I forget my name some days. So I have the short line on the end there, and the team line comes to 10. And are we missing anything, Jacob, up front that you can see? I'll get out of here. That's all right. Missing up front. His check line's on, his check line's on. Not that I can see, but that don't mean anything. <laughs> Am I missing something? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was a, there's an obvious mistake question. You didn't know if I was tricking you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not this time. It's, uh, it's hard every time you hitch up a new, a new setup. Um, I've been using um, Baron and Bill, no, actually, I haven't hitched Bear and Bill together for a little while, but I've been using Bear and Ken together, so I'm adjusting lines all the time. So now, when I put the three back together again, my lines might be all messed up, and I really can't tell until how I actually use them whether or not they're messed up. So now, when you're hooking a three horse evener like that, do you go on this? You go on a different length than what your your two are hooked up? No, are they the same? Thing. Because look. See this long chain here? Okay, it makes, That's the, what brings it makes together, the difference. So you can hitch all, foot, all three okay. on the same length. Gotta get in. That's, 
happy. Happy. Okay, so what you need to do when you're hitching up this last hookup is if, if it's too tight, the tongue is going to just shoot right up in the air, especially if he goes ahead. The farther he goes ahead, the further that tongue will shoot right up in the air. So if it's not on the right link, you got to adjust it before you take off, otherwise you could, could have troubles. Um, so the way to figure that out is I've got him hit, but he's hanging back just a little bit. See this? The whip tree is not up here where the evener is. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up there and ask him to step ahead so those, those are even and see what happens to this tongue. Oh. So I can tell by pulling that up that tongue is going really high. So in other words, we cannot have this hitched as tight as we would on a regular pole with two horses because of that. So because there's nothing up front to stop him from going Keep, keep going. going. Right. So, um, and, and I'm pretty sure I had it on six links just for three, four. So let's Drop change one. it all around to six, six links. So six go around length. the back okay. side and we'll just change it on. If you just drop the outside completely and then you can walk in and get the other one. And I can get these two. So now you want it so it's all even. So the, the, chain, the hook is going to be pointing upward. Okay. So now you can look and make sure all the chains are, are level and your hooks are pointed upright to know if you've got it right and we, we're good, we do. Okay, so we're all set there, the plows all hit and I'll explain the plows when we get to the fields. There is one more thing I want to do though. If you haven't, you can get what you did, Darren. Yeah. He just texted me. Oh, did he? Leonard did. Yeah, the actual, yeah. Yeah, I want to find that rake he's got where it's a, you can either rake or ted with it. Oh yeah, yeah. So he says a week ago we had 80 degrees, woke up this morning with a high of 37, set a new seasonal snowfall record, not getting to the fields anytime soon. It's all, all yeah, warm. they got like three inches of snow, yeah, last night or yesterday. <laughs> so we're all hitched up, ready to go, but I thought because uh, yesterday when we were here in the garden, Bill was kind of aggressive and he usually is until he gets worked down a little bit tired. But because of that, I decided to use my hold back straps. And uh, this is, I'll show you how I use these. And this is something that's been around forever. Um, they used to use it a lot with the big hitches, especially out west type of thing. And all this does is helps hold him back so he's not pulling on me and on the lines quite so much. He's actually fighting against himself when he's using this. And uh, I, I do want to give a shout out to uh, a friend of mine that kind of showed me a couple other things about these. I already knew about them, but he showed me a couple of more things about these. And uh, he actually has a YouTube channel that I would like to help him promote even a little bit. Um, his name is Zach Odom, and he has, and I hate to say this four letter, four letter word, but he has mules. I'm just kidding, Zach, I really don't mind mules. Uh, but I do like to pick on, pick on you and other people about their mules. Um, but anyways, he has a channel, it's called Zach Odom Mule Logging, and it's, Zach is just a young man, but he seems to be very knowledgeable about what he's doing. So if you guys are interested in mules, or it doesn't really matter, it's, it's not much different than myself with my horses. Um, he's doing logging with them, and he also does a lot of training with his, with his animals. And he has, has had horses quite a bit too. So anyways, check him out. So this, all this is just a simple strap that um, goes from, are you at all familiar no, with these? No, I've things? never seen them used. Okay, no. so all it is is two lines like this. So these two lines go straight into Bill's bits. So all I do is flip it up here, run it, run it through the rings and snap it into the bit also, one on each side. And this, and I still have to hit up the other side of course, but this will come down through and hitch onto Ken's heel chain. And you can adjust it to wherever you want on the heel chain. But you gotta make sure it's kind of threaded through properly, otherwise it will get, your, your lines will be messed up. So you kind of gotta thread it through underneath everything. 
but that's what we'll do. And hopefully we won't need to use these for very long and then, and then we can take them right off. Um, but it just saves on me holding back so much on him and he's kind of fighting himself. To tell you the honest truth, I really haven't had great luck with them, but there's times where it does help some. Well, doesn't he have to sort of figure out that he's fighting himself in order for it to work? Yes. Bill is the type of horse that is really, really, really good in the woods, but he isn't always good on the farm. He tends to fight things on the farm. Um, fight meaning, you know, he just wants to go fast. He doesn't want to settle down, slow down. I'm thinking part of it is because the farm work is a lot easier and he likes that heavy pulling. But at any rate, um, when he gets tired, he does slow down and he works a lot better. Okay, so if you can go over and hitch, actually let me unhitch him. Uh, I, can, I can do it. I can do it. But I need you to put it on top of the hames. Yep. And I don't know if you noticed my half hitch type of thing that I use to unhitch to hang the hames. You go underneath the, the, you go underneath or over top of your? Under. Under. I thought so. Hey, hey. No, that's not. That's not. I mean, that would work. So here's a good example of what's going on with Baron, and this is what I was concerned with. He's the type of horse that when he stops, he backs up, and I'm I'm working on that, and I'll continue working on that. So it can be a serious problem with a stud like him because as he backs up, he doesn't have, he's not held over by the neck yoke so and the check rein and the short rein that's actually keeps him close to to can and it's a better chance of him going over and biting him oh, so okay. that's what i gotta really watch out with him and so i have got to work on keeping him up here so he doesn't do this and, and i i can come here come here uh, so what i do with this is i just put it up here throw it over the top just one half twist okay and okay. basically always stays there so I'm on hit. I'm gonna swing around that way because I want to start up in there. Get up there. Get up there. 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 Okay, I, get, I see things I have to adjust already. Baron's short, line is too short. So I'm gonna adjust that so it's longer, but there's always a fine line where it should be. So Jim, how do you know it's too short when you were looking at it? Because as he's starting to jump ahead type of thing, which he tends to do, he's hitting that really fast. And I want, I just want him to have a little, little bit more ability to go ahead. Okay. Um, so that's, that's why. I also know, I knew it was when I put it on type of thing, cause I knew where the, it should be approximately. Um, so it's something you really have to work with and experience, experience to absolutely. do. Yeah, there's nothing, there's no, it's gotta be 23 inches long. No, there's none of that. No formula to, okay. Okay, so this is what we're doing today. Um, as, you, as you've seen from other videos, we've got our oats in. Um, I have decided I want a small piece of corn. So two, three acres, maybe at the most. Um, so I decided that I want to put a patch right here. So I am going to plow straight down through to the edge of this field and oh, oh, oh. Let me explain first why I just did that. Baron was backing up. 
he was starting to like the idea of think the idea of biting biting, Pam. Yeah. So I needed to touch him a little bit to get him up there where he knows he belongs and where he has to be. Um, and that's going to be a continual problem today because the neck yoke is not there to, to allow to stop him from backing out. Right. Um, so I got to watch that. I wish I had a place for my whip here so I could easily tap him with a whip when he does that. Um, I can't just grab my line and hit him very good, so I need to use the end of my hand and do it that way. Right. And that worked fine. Anyways, what was I talking about? So, so this is where I'm going to have a small patch of corn. Um, this is my old plow that I've used to use all the time before I bought the new plow. Um, I really like this plow, but there was reasons for buying the new plow also, and, then, and I, I use them both. So today, what I'm going to do is plow all the way down through, and I have a tree up on that the fence, the, the tree line way up there that is half, that's dead on the top. <laughs> if I can't see it, there's actually two right together, and I'm going for the right hand one. So I'm eyeing that tree, and I'm going to put Ken's ears right with that tree right between his ears to try and have a straight furrow. I am, <clears throat> this is the first time in years and years and years I didn't have my horse Buck that died to use. Buck was one of those horses that I, I depended on him a lot when I plowed. So I don't have him. So I have to go by my skills and, and start doing something else to make a straight furrow. This straight furrow is very important. It allows the whole field to be straight. So when I get down the other end, I have to turn around and plow differently, but I'll deal with that when I get down there. So all I'm gonna do is start them, keep my eyes on that tree, and keep that tree between Ken's ears, and try to focus and get down to the end of the field. So this plow is very simple to start and to, to put down and pick up. When you get that at the edge of the field, all you do is just pull the lever, and it almost always just drops down. Like that, oh, oh, and you're ready to go. When I get to the end of the field, just gonna pull that string and it will pick it right up. Let me ask a question, Jim, real yeah. quick. Why why is, are you focusing so much on getting your rows straight when you're plowing? Because I'm vain. <laughs> no, I meant the, the what do, does it help make the rest of the uh, field work easier? Absolutely. Well, the rest of the plowing easier. Yeah. Just, just imagine you've got a perfectly straight plow, a furrow, and every time you go perfectly straight, or imagine a big S curve. How much more difficult it'd be to follow the S, right. S line as opposed to a straight line. Okay. So, I, all plowmen, whether they're good or bad, that's what they strive to do, to have that nice straight furrow. Yeah. So. Sometimes and, you have used, like, you put a fence post down there or something, didn't you, before? Yes, but I have a tree I can see. The reason I asked that question is with the plowing job I just did with a tractor, I know if you don't get it straight, how rough it is to, to straighten back out again. Yes. So that's why I asked that question. You know first here. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try my best. Uh, I'm, I'm, it may be terrible. It's, it's this, this way in life too. I have to focus on that tree up there. And sometimes all I gotta do is move my eyes from that tree and I can't find it again. It is such a tiny little specimen that I'm shooting for because it's a dead tree up on that tree line. And there's two of them next to each other. Can you see it, Jacob? Yeah, yeah. now I can, yeah. And it, it, Just over top of it. And you try to find it again. Just now over top of the aspen trees? Yes, yeah. to the right of the aspen trees that are, yeah, that are I, I, but leaving out. I'm sure the viewers cannot see no. it. It's very... But, it's very but I'll try to say that's the way it is in life so often. You, to accomplish things, you have to really focus on that goal if you're going to make it there. You're right. Now I lost it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Cut Uh, don't be surprised if you hear my horses cough once in a while. I actually have a little bit of a cold going through my herd. Um, Ken is the worst one. We've actually had some had the feature come over our vet and we've got some medicine in him. It really hasn't helped. Um, but the best thing for him is actually work. Just to 
kind of helps bring that phlegm off. It's just an upper respiratory problem. And so hopefully, you know, a little while it'll get better. But I have noticed even Baron coughed once or twice even this morning. Yeah, kind of gave a <laughs> sour look. Okay, so this is going okay. Um, I just need to keep at it now. Yeah. It is crooked and it's crooked not really that it took my eyes off the tree but they were kind of veering off to the left quite a bit it's a possibility that bill's short line was a little short so he's as he's going kind of fast he's feeling that short line and it's, he wants to go to the left so um but you don't need that perfect i mean it's going to blend in together um if you are going to go into farming and expect perfection every time you're just going to be disappointed. Um, so anyways, what I will do now is my second furrow, which is actually harder than the first furrow. And this here is where I really depended on Buck. Buck is very good about walking in the right spot. He is the furrow horse, was the furrow horse, so he, needed, he wants to be in the furrow. But on this time, he can't be in the furrow. He has to be on this side just enough so these two furrows kind of flop right together and a perfect plowing job is not even having any grass showing between these two furrows that is not going to happen today I guarantee that and it hardly ever happens for me when I start these off um, but as you harrow it it'll all blend together so it's fine um, you don't want a huge mound here because it's a little bit harder to spread out also so I am sure I'm gonna have a difficult time keeping Bill where he should be as I go up through here um, as a matter of fact I'm gonna adjust his well, no, I'm not. I'm just going to leave it as is. But I, I, I have to have him not on the where I just plowed, but just beside it. And it's just, it's, it's tricky. It's really tricky. Now, if you noticed, I don't know if you were watching me when I turned around. To turn around this shark to come right back in the same spot, it's very, very hard to do. And a lot of times you can actually jackknife your plow because you're going to hit here. So what I did, I actually turned really sharp as hard as I could and actually put the horses on the other side and then brought them back so the plow is pretty close to where I want it to be. And it, and it is. Uh, some people, I keep forgetting to say, some people might not even know what a furrow is. Okay. So this this area right here, where there's that sharp edge with the furrow. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Um, one other problem with making that first furrow you have your eyes on that tree or wherever you're shooting for. It is so, there's a, such a desire to stop, or well not stop, but to turn around and look what you've done. And you'll mess up every time you do. So you got to stay focused on that. That's that, hilarious. That point. I never heard you say that before. As I'm going up this side, I don't need to focus on what's ahead. I need to focus on what I'm doing. So it's good to turn and look back to see that it's coming the way it should be. And right there, I'm very happy with what that's done so far. With my other plow, it would have actually done a better job. And I could have used the other plow, especially to start with, but I chose to use this one and it'll be fine. But uh, as you can see, the furrow itself is broke up several times through there. My other plow probably wouldn't have broke up. It probably would have stayed one Stains, the yeah. same ribbon, which would have been better. But after we get going the next two or three times, it should be perfectly fine. I'm going to ask a question now. 
how moisture how much moisture you got in the ground is this about where you like it this is just about perfect yes because so, that does make a difference on how well it plows how easy it plows right because well you showed last i believe fall in one of your videos where it was very very wet where you were plowing sod yes. ground but no. even then it plowed pretty nice. right but when it gets too dry what happens it's just it'll more crumbly mm -hmm. break up fast and it doesn't want to roll over yeah. quite so nice it falls apart type of thing this particular plow is a John Deere plow. Bob, hey, hey, oh, oh. Yeah, why is it watching my horses? Mm -hmm. um, this particular plow is a John Deere bottom, and this has more of an abrupt turn, and that's for, it's made to actually not hold the furrow together and break it up because it will fall apart better in a lot of different soils, like gravelly soil. Okay. Each right, each soil, soil has right, a different right. plow that works better. Okay. Oh, oh. 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 Bill saw the fur <laughs> and he actually just jumped right in the fur. So if I continue going like this, I'm going to mess things up. So we decided to stop. I'm going to haul them over and try and get them lined up better and hope they'll be fine. As with a crooked furrow that I did that first time, sometimes in the second furrow, you can actually help straighten it up. Mm -hmm. After that, it's kind of hard to straighten up the furrow. Um, it can be done, but it's still a little bit hard. What? Wait a minute. I, what did he do? He jumped into the furrow. He's in the furrow now. Bill is. So Bill should be standing about where Buck is right now. Where Ken is, yeah. Or Ken is. Yes, exactly. He jumped over a yeah. horse width. Yeah. So I could I could just keep driving him, but it's almost better to stop, get him set over here, yeah. and it's more apt to stay in, in the course it should be. What I did, and do you know why I did what I did, Jacob? No. Okay. So, and it, it didn't help me as, as much as I thought it would. Okay. Is that what you mean when he jumped back in the furrow the second well, time? The second time. Yeah. What was happening is that, that was a, a major curve in my furrow. Oh, okay. So because of that, I saw he was going to jump in, and I said, "Okay, just do that." And I kept him in that furrow until it started straightening out, and then I pulled him back on this side. Okay, that's what, okay. And I was hoping to look back and I'd be a lot straighter furrow, but it didn't do as good as I hmm. wanted. And not only that, the next time down through, I'm not gonna have a furrow to follow right there. So right. it's gonna, it didn't do what I was hoping for. Let's put it that way. I'll, Oops. 
Okay, we made it through. Oh, uh, I am not really displeased with this burrow, even though it might look terrible to a lot of people. Um, it's surprising, even now, how much I probably can straighten this out, although not huge amounts. But maybe by the time we go another six or eight more furrows, you might see a quite different job in these labels, maybe. Um, so we'll just continue at it and we'll show you what we, what kind of a mess we can get into.